Good morning, students, or good afternoon, or good night. It depends on when you will watch this lecture. Today we are having lecture number 13. Today we are talking about uh, the last bacterial pathogens. Uh, from next class we will talk about viruses. Today we are talking about rickettsia, chlamydia, mycoplasma, and we also should discuss an important group of microorganisms that also cause, cause infections in human. Uh, these are fungi. Let's start from the first one, the first pathogen. This pathogen belongs to family Rickettsia sea, mm, genus Rickettsia, and there are some species. Rickettsia provaseki. Uh, this um, <coughs> species is a former Rickettsia musiri. So sometimes in some textbooks, um, microbiology textbooks, you may uh, see this name. Rickettsia provaseki cause epidemic or louse-borne typhus. And it also uh, causes brill sensors disease. Rickettsia typhi cause endemic or murium typhus. Uh, we studied some diseases, some diseases that also called typhus. It was uh, called um, typhoid fever or enteric fever. Here we are talking about epidemic and endemic typhus. And the last special, the last special <coughs> here is Coxiella barnetti that causes Q fever. Once more, pay your attention. This is Latin name of bacteria. Latin name of bacteria. This is name of disease that is caused by the pathogen. Rickettsia typhi is Latin name of bacteria. Endemic murium typhus uh, is a name of disease that is caused by this pathogen. Coxiella baronetti is a Latin name of bacteria. Q fever is name of disease caused by this bacteria. Uh, firstly, some question, some uh, words about history. Why is it called a rickettsia? What is it? Uh, Rocky Mountain spotted fever was first discovered in 1896 in the Snake River Valley of Idaho in the USA. Howard Taylor Ricketts, you can see him on this photo, was the first who identified the infectious organism. That's why this bacteria was named Ricketsia. Ricketsia. And then uh, he died also from typhus, from typhus. <coughs> Rickettsia provazeki uh, was described then by uh, doctor, by scientist Provazek. His name was Provazek, so uh, it is uh, named, it was named Provazeki. Um, Later, after some time, I will tell you that um, endemic typhus, endemic typhus, is uh, transmitted by biting uh, of ticks. Uh, that's why um, it is endemic in uh, some countries, in regions, in some countries of our planet, and it depends on those ticks that live in these regions. And you can see, you can see world spreading of rickettsia species that are transmitted by these um, ticks. For example, if we talk about India, um, it is transmitted um, by Indian tick of Indian tick typhus of rickettsia. If we talk about <coughs> such uh, About Russia, for example, there are some species. Uh, if we talk about other Asian countries, uh, like Egypt or uh, Iran, Iraq, um, there is uh, their species, their endemic species, Rickettsia conori Israel, that uh, may be transmitted by ticks. About morphology. Rickettsia are 
pleomorphic coccobacil. Pleomorphic means they may be mm, both cockle shaped or spherical and rod shaped. They are pleomorphic. They are intracellular parasites. They can live, they can replicate just inside living cells. They are gram negative but not stained well with gram stain. So we use special staining technique. Uh, Romanovsky hints the stain or Gimenez stain. Uh, in both methods, in Romanovsky hints and in this uh, photo, and in Gimenez stain, you can see are stained in uh, <coughs> in pink purple uh, color. Uh, in Romanovsky hints, uh, eukaryotic cell, eukaryotic cell is stained in blue in gimena stain in green so this is eukaryotic cell human cell and uh, rickettsia are intracellular parasites they are present intracellularly they are non-motile non-capsulated uh, sometimes they may, may have micro capsule micro capsule uh, thin layer of thin capsule layer and they are non they are non-performing Cultivation. Firstly, <coughs> I have said that um, rickettsia are intracellular parasites. They need they need living cells for replication. So it means that they can't be cultivated in any nutrient media. So how can we cultivate parasitic microorganisms? Uh, the first one, the first method, in yolk sacs of embryonated, uh, embryonated eggs. This is um, chicken egg, embryonated with embryo. And uh, we can cultivate uh, it in yolk sac when we inject, inject rickettsia in yolk sac here. Then we also can cultivate rickettsia in cell culture, for example, vero cells, it is the name of cell culture, where the generation time is from 8 up to 10 hours at uh, temperature uh, 34 degrees Celsius. Uh, we can cultivate rickettsia in animals' organism, uh, but you should remember that for reasons of biosafety, Isolation of rickettsia should be done only in reference laboratories, only in special laboratories. Rickettsia is very pathogenic uh, bacteria. Um, it also was object for uh, creation of biological weapon. Infective dose is very small. We may work with rickettsia just in special laboratories, high risk laboratories. Uh, in these uh, diagrams, you can see cultivation of rickettsia in various cells. In this photo, we can see uh, gram-stained uh, rickettsia in light microscopy and here in immunofluorescence microscopy. What about fermentative properties? They are not active in fermentation. They don't ferment carbohydrates and don't produce gases. They are parasites. That's why their fermentative properties uh, are very, very um, slow. They are not active in fermentation. Antigenic structure. They have two antigens, that is protein, antigen and lipopolysaccharide antigen. What about virulence factors? They are gram-negative, so they produce endotoxin. It uh, destroys the endothelium of blood vessels and causes an increase in body temperature. Destruction of um, endothelium is one of the main um, mechanism in pathogenesis and uh, it causes one of the main clinical manifestation it causes rashes the another virulence factor 
uh, are adhesion proteins that are responsible for adherence then they also produce hemolysine that destroy red blood cells of human organism uh, some species uh, some strains have microcapsule it takes part in reactivation of rickettsia in human cells i have said that rickettsia are parasites and they can uh, be survived in human cells for a long period for 10 or 15 or even 20 years so microcapsule uh, provide reactivation of rickettsia when they multiply in human cells once more and infect other cells and another one another one is phospholipase phospholipase uh, is aggressive enzyme that disrupt plasma membrane of human cells and provide invasion of rickettsia inside cells epidemiology and pathogenesis diseases caused by rickettsia um, i have said that uh, there are two species of rickettsia the first one is rickettsia provazeki that cause epidemic typhus or laos worm typhus rickettsia typhi cause endemic or murine typhus what about source of infection? In epidemic typhus, it is sick men. In endemic, it is a sick animals, mostly uh, rats. Epidemic typhus or louse worm is transmitted by biting of lice, biting of human lice. That's why this disease mostly spread in um, those countries where uh, poor hygiene, where people are infected with lice. It was spread uh, during uh, the first and the second world war. Endemic typhus may be transmitted by others' transmission ways, via others' transmission ways. The first one, it is bite of red flea or ticks um, ticks transmit the disease rare then it may be transmitted by inhalation inhalation of bacteria inhalation of bacteria with uh, feces of red flea and we uh, people can be contaminated uh, by food worm with infected red urine so biting of red flea inhalation of feces inhalation of feces of red that contain uh, that can contain uh, rickettsia and food worm when food is contaminated with uh, urine of infected rats, infected sores. Pathogenesis of uh, epidemic typhus and endemic typhus. Rickettsia are transmitted to humans by the bite of infected arthropod. Uh, arthropod, these are um, ticks or lice or flea when feces of arthropod enter the biting site or through inhalation of these feces or when urine enter uh, food so before before biting before biting um, flea or lice discharge feces with rickettsia there then rickettsia multiply at the site of entry and enter the bloodstream uh, the patient start to scratch the site of biting and bacteria are uh, scratched into the blood then rickettsia localized in the vascular endothelial cells and multiply to cause thrombosis that lead to rupture and necrosis 
locate center the bloodstream localize it in uh, endothelial cells multiply there destroy these cells now look in this picture bacteria are present in endothelial cells of blood vessels they destroy endothelial cells destroy blood vessels cause thrombosis oxygen doesn't reach doesn't reach and it causes rupture and necrosis what are symptoms of epidemic and endemic typhus it causes severe headache chills generalized myalgia muscle pain high fever <clears throat> up to 39-41 degrees Celsius vomiting and one of the main manifestations is macular rush that occur after four or seven days firstly on trunk and then spread to limbs to uh, extremities rushes rushes occur because of destruction of blood vessels uh, we also talk about Briozinser disease caused by rickettsia provozeki just rickettsia provozeki can cause it rickettsia may remain latent in the lymphatic tissue or organs for years uh, up to four to 10 or 15 years it occurs after the person recovered from epidemic typhus and reactivation of the rickettsia provozeki even without biting of lice so even uh, in the absence of biting of lice, Briozinson disease uh, occurs because of reactivation of rickettsia provozeki that live that survive in uh, endothelial cells for a long period. This disease is mild and uh, has low mortality rate. In this diagram you can see rashes, rashes that occur in patients with typhus. And this rash spreads over the body. The another disease, another disease that is caused by another pathogen, uh, it is Q fever. Q fever that is caused by coxiella barnetti. Q fever was named because uh, it's uh, non-specific clinical symptoms. Um, Q is uh, Q arises from the word clear, unclear. What's unclear? Q fever resembles resembles uh, uh, flu. It has flu-like symptoms. Um, Coxiella, this pathogen was discovered by Cox, that's why it was named Coxiella, and described by another scientist, Burnett. That's why uh, it uh, got, it was named Burnetti, Coxiella Burnetti. Source of infection are wild animals, rodents, birds, and also domestic animals like cattle and sheep. Uh, primarily, primarily, uh, natural reservoir, natural reservoir of infection are wild animals. Um, Q fever may be transmitted from wild animals to domestic animals by biting of ticks. Transmission: uh, the person may be infected by Q fever through foodborne transmission. Uh, when <coughs> we drink milk from infected animal contact via handling of infected wool airborne transmission inhalation of dust infected with dried urine or in working with animal wool and biting of ticks once more uh, this transmission way is uh, present in transmission of Q fever from wild animals to domestic animals when tick bites firstly uh, wild animals for example birds or rodents and transmitted to domestic animals what about pathogenesis coxiella enter human organism through skin or mucosal membranes through uh, these sites then in the bloodstream engulfed by phagocytes 
multiplying there, there also parasites, transferred in parenchymatous organs like spleen and liver, multiply once more, enter the blood from organs once more. Some of them, uh, some of, some bacteria are destroyed there, producing endotoxin. Secondary infectious focuses develop in internal organs and allergy appears. In clinical manifestations, Q fever at first resembles flu because it is characterized by chills, malaise, high fever up to 40 degrees Celsius, myalgia and arteralgia. Um, you know that um, bacteria multiply in liver so we can see hepatomegaly enlargement of liver in all patients and sometimes we can see hepatitis after some time uh, disease leads to several uh, central nervous system uh, disorder and we can see insomnia problems with uh, uh, dream in patients and some patients have rashes Microbiological diagnosis, treatment and prophylaxis of Lausborn and Urim typhus. Uh, I hope you understand why it is called Lausborn, because the only transmission way by biting of lice. And in um, Urim typhus, uh, it is called because of sores. Because of sores. These are rats. Uh, which specimen may be collected? It is blood, because bacteria spread the bloodstream and they are present just there uh, and serum for serological tests the first method that can be used is microscopic i remind you that we prepare smear and stain it by romanovsky Higgs staining or gimenez staining the another one is serological test serological tests are the main are, are the main, the, re, most, the most important in diagnosis of typhus. We may use indirect immunofluorescence test when we add a fluorescence serum um, into a specimen. Complement fixation test, indirect hemagglutination, that is also called whale helix test, and ELISA. Enzyme linked immunosorbentous cell. We also may use PCR uh, and a biological test. We inoculate blood of the patient into uh, animals, into rats, mice. Rickettsia provazeki produces fever without any testicular inflammation. Rickettsia typhi develops fever and tumic reaction, inflammation of testicles. So we can uh, differentiate uh, Lausborn uh, typhus from murine typhus by injection of specimen into animals and uh, observation uh, absence or presence of testicular inflammation. And once more. I should say uh, that rickettsial isolation in culture is hazardous to laboratory personnel. In uh, clinical laboratory we may detect antibodies, but isolation in animals, isolation in culture is very, very dangerous. What about prophylaxis? Firstly, uh, this bacteria produce lifelong community. But relapses may occur, you know about it, it's Brill-Zilser disease if bacteria survive intracellularly, if disease, if disease uh, was not treated, was not uh, finished completely. Um, general prophylaxis includes vector control, means control of lies among uh, the people, control of um, rodents, uh, there are vaccines that are used for prophylaxis. These are live vaccine and killed vaccine. In Q fever, 
We may use live attenuated vaccine for risk group people with doctors um, Shepherd and Cattle Slayer that contact with um, animals, wool with animals, uh, meat, animals' blood. Treatment includes, includes uh, wide spectrum antibiotics like doxycycline, it's first choice and tetracycline, it's alternative choice. Uh, if we talk, if we talk uh, about um, epidemic typhus, um, it is necessary to say that um, during the first and the second world war, a lot of people died. A lot of people died uh, because of typhus. Mortality rate is very high, about 70. 60-70 percent um, and uh, some countries some countries uh, used this disease as a bio biological weapon uh, they used infected lice infected lice that uh, were used to bite soldiers and usual people citizens and uh, cause typhoid fever. The another pathogen here is Chlamydia. Family Chlamydia sea, genera Chlamydia and there are some species. The first one is Chlamydia trachomatis and uh, this species causes some infections. The first one is trachoma or it is also called inclusion conjunctivitis. Then it causes urogenital infections. Uh, the third disease is caused by chlamydia trachomatis is lymphogranuloma venerum. And it also causes pneumonia of newborns. Another species is the chlamydia pneumonia that causes respiratory infections like pneumonia and bronchitis and chlamydia psittaci that cause psittacosis. Psittacosis are uh, considered as a pneumonia. It is pneumonia. It infects lungs. Morphology of chlamydia. Firstly, why is it named chlamydia? In infected human cells, these bacteria form inclusions that enclosed with shell resembling cloak or mantle. Look here please at this photo. This is infected human cell, epithelial cell. These are inclusions or inclusion bodies. This one, this one, this one. And chlamydia are very small, are very small inside this inclusion body. So these inc inclusions are enclosed enclosed with a shell that resembles mantle or cloak and uh, in Greek language mantle is named clamis, clamis. so chlamydia are present inside this inclusion they are very very small inside here and here for example these are cocoid bacteria cocoid we can see here once more, this is not bacteria, this is inclusion body. Bacteria are present inside of the inclusion body. They are non motile, obligate intracellular parasites of eukaryotic cells. They also um, can't live without living cells. They need just living cells for replication. They are gram negative, but uh, stained by Gram's method very bad because they are present inside human cells. Uh, dyes that are used in Gram staining can't reach um, this bacteria inside inclusion body, so we use Romanovsky heme, the stain and gimenez stain. Romanovsky heme, the stain and gimenez stain is used to detect intracellular bacteria. If you noticed in, uh, in Rickettsia, for example, They are non-spore forming, non-capsulated, and there is another 
main property of chlamydia. They has a unique cell wall. Their outer lipopolysaccharide membrane has no peptidoglycan. Has no peptidoglycan. Chlamydia, chlamydia uh, can exist in two forms. In two forms. The first one, it is non-replicating form. Uh, infectious particle called the elementary body that is released from ruptured infected cells and can be transmitted from one individual to another. So, non-replicating means that it is not able uh, to replicate and it is used just for transmission from one patient to another patient. But when non-replicating body uh, non-replicating form this elementary body enters the human organism it uh, becomes reticulate body it is intracytoplasmic form call it reticulate body that multiplies in post cells and we should say that uh, target cells target cells for chlamydia are columnar epithelial cells Chlamydia doesn't chlamydia don't affect uh, endothelial cells of blood vessels they don't infect um, cells of connective tissues, for example. It infects columnar epithelial cells. In this uh, diagram, this scheme, you can see life cycle of chlamydia. Uh, let's start from, from here, maybe. From here. These are elementary body. Elementary body. Uh, that are not able to replicate. Elementary body enters to human cells. They are transmitted, for example, by sexual contact uh, from one person to another person, attached to uh, epithelial cells, then enters uh, by phag uh, phagocytosis, by um, engulfment, not phagocytosis, by engulfment into the epithelial cells and they form here, they uh, become reticulate body. Um, reticulate body start to multiply inside epithelial cells multiply and then, then after 24, 72 hours, after 2-3 days, uh, reticulate body, reticulate body, uh, becomes elementary body and they are, they released from epithelial cell and infect other epithelial cells in human organism, in tissue where they are located. What about cultivation? I have said that chlamydia are intracellular obligate parasites. They can be cultivated just in living cells, in living cells or organism. They require an intracellular habitat. Uh, the first method how can we cultivate it is in tissue cultures of a variety of eukaryotic cell lines like Hella, Hep2, McCoy. Um, Hella is tissue culture that was uh, uh, given firstly from American woman Helen uh, at a, in about 1950. She had a uh, cancer of uterine. Uh, Hella cells are able to multiply and multiply. So these cells are used for replication, for cultivation, uh, obligate parasites there. And another method for its cultivation is cultivation in embryonated eggs, particularly in the yolk sac. Yolk sac here is um, the same as in previous pathogen in, in rickettsia. It is cultivation of chlamydia in cell lines. They form inclusion bodies. Inclusion bodies. What about fermentative properties? 
Chlamydial cells are unable to carry out energy metabolism and lack many biosynthetic pathways. They are obligate parasites. They use host metabolism for their uh, leaf, uh, for their life and the replication. Therefore, they are entirely dependent on the host cell to supply them with ATP. You know that it is molecule that provide energy source, that is energy source molecule and other intermediates. So, uh, metabolism of chlamydia is a lack, is broken, we can say, uh, because they are obligate parasites. They can't ferment, uh, they can't ferment nothing. What about antigens? What about antigens? Uh, they have uh, uh, such antigens as shared group, or genus antigen, uh, genus specific antigen with lipopolysaccharide. What is it? It is uh, a group specific for genera. For genera, it is the same in one genera, within one genera, it is lipopolysaccharide. And then there is specific species specific or serovar specific antigens. These are proteins, they are present just in chlamydia of one species or one serological variant. They also have major outer membrane protein and eukaryotic cell binding proteins. I have said about serovar specific antigen. So um, in chlamydia trachomatis, in one of the main species, uh, there are 15 uh, serological variants in this species. They are called by uh, Latin letters. Serological variants A, B, B, A and C cause trachoma disease. It is a, another name is inclusion conjunctivitis. Serological variants D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, so from D up to K cause urogenital infections and pneumonia of newborns and serological variants L1, L2 and L3 cause a lymphogranuloma venerum. Um, it means that chlamydia trachomatis uh, have protein antigen, this is serovar specific antigen that is distinguished, that is distinguished in some serological variants uh, that's why they cause different infections different infections what about virulence factors they have uh, cysteine rich proteins of cell wall uh, that inhibit phagolysosome fusion inhibit phagocytosis we can say a lipopolysaccharide of cell wall causes septic shock uh, adhesion proteins uh, that are present in bacteria provide adhesion to silic acid receptors on mucosal membranes and they produce endotoxin. Epidemiology and pathogenesis of diseases caused by chlamydia. The source of infection are sick men. Uh, in chlamydia trachomatis and chlamydia pneumonia and sick animals these are only birds, parrots or doves in chlamydia psittacea. Transmission ways um, if it is chlamydia trachomatis or chlamydia uh, chlamydia trachomatis is transmitted by sexually transmitted sexually uh, way uh, it causes urethritis for example uh, direct transmission in trachoma and airborne transmission in chlamydia psittacea and chlamydia pneumonia. So it depends on the species. Chlamydia uh, trachomatis that cause sexually transmitted disease transmitted by sexual contact, direct contact, direct transmission in trachoma also chlamydia trachomatis and airborne transmission in chlamydia psittacea and chlamydia pneumonia and uh, in uh, uh, chlamydia trachomatis also when it causes um, pneumonia of newborns. Pathogenesis. 
of chlamydial infections. Chlamydia trachomatis can infect columnar, cuboidal, and transitional epithelial cells, which are found on the mucous membranes of the urethra and the cervix and the natrium, fallopian tubes and rectum, respiratory tract and conjunctiva. So, chlamydia target cells, target cells for chlamydia are epithelial cells of urethra and the cervix and the natrium, fallopian tubes and rectum, respiratory tract and conjunctiva. So, that's why this bacteria causes infections there. The clinical manifestations of chlamydial infections are caused by uh, two mechanisms. The first, by the direct destruction of human cells during chlamydial replications there, when human epithelial cells are destroyed directly by uh, chlamydia. And another one, uh, by the pro-inflammatory cytokine response or production uh, that uh, they stimulate that bacteria stimulate. I hope you remember what are cytokines. I will ask you about it in practical class once more. Diseases that caused by chlamydia trachomatis. We have started to talk about them. The first one uh, that is caused by chlamydia trachomatis is trachoma. It is also called chronic keratoconjunctivitis or inclusion conjunctivitis. So you must remember that trachoma infect eyes. It is chronic inflammatory granulomatose process of eye surface leading to cornea ulceration, scarring and blindness. Trachoma is endemic in some African countries, the Middle East, South Asia, where the living conditions are crowded and sanitation is poor. Uh, trachoma mosque uh, present in these countries and it is transmitted by direct contact of um, direct contact of infected fingers, infected hands, infected uh, things when it contact with eyes. The another uh, disease that is caused by chlamydia trachomatis is uh, adult inclusion conjunctivitis. It is acute process with mucoporin discharge, dermatitis, corneal infiltrates and corneal vascularization in chronic disease. It's also it resembles uh, trachoma. Infant pneumonia or pneumonia of newborn is also caused by chlamydia trachomatis. Uh, it develops after two three week incubation period. The infant develops rhinitis, followed by bronchitis with a characteristic dry cough. It develops in newborn. Uh, another disease that is transmitted uh, by sexual contact and caused by chlamydia trachomatis are lymphogranuloma venerum and urogenital infections. Lymphogranuloma venerum, a painless ulcer uh, that develops at the site of infection that spontaneously heals, followed by inflammation and swelling of lymph nodes draining the area here then progression to systemic infection, systemic symptoms. Urogenital infections caused by chlamydia is characterized by acute process involving the genital urinary tract with a characteristic mucoporin discharge. Asymptomatic infections are mostly common in women. That's why it is very often when women don't know about their disease. So, diseases, urogenital infections caused by chlamydia may include cervicitis, cervicitis if um, infection, if infection develops in uterine cervix, endometritis, if infection and inflammation occur in endometrium, it is the inner lining of the uterus. I hope you know it. 
salpingitis, inflammation uh, in collecting tubes, and urethritis, inflammation of the urethra. In this photo, in this photo, you can see patient with uh, uh, lymphogranuloma venerum. Um, in this disease, we can see inflammation of lymph, in lymph nodes uh, that leads to formation of bubos in these sites. In these sites, uh, these uh, bubos uh, are present. Uh, these are regionals, regional bubos that are located in regional lymph nodes. Here, for example. Um, chronic chlamydia infections uh, lead uh, to the development of female and male infertility. You must remember about it. Sometimes uh, women or men come to the doctor uh, with a problem when they uh, can't, when women can't have pregnancy. Uh, it is caused by chronic long chlamydia infections. It occurs because of obstruction of the fallopian tubes in women, because the epithelial cells are destroyed and uh, severe inflammation occurs there. Chronic prostatitis accompanied by pain in the perineum, frequent painful urination, and it also causes pathologies of pregnancy. For example, non-developing pregnancy, miscarriage, premature birth, fetal abnormality, and intrauterine inter 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 infection of the fetus. Uh, sometimes in a uh, um, patient we can see clinical manifestation of chlamydia infection. For example, it is a uh, mucoparlin discharge, like here, it is cervix, cervix and mucoparlin discharge from cervix. But in most cases, in most cases today, it is asymptomatic without any symptoms. Uh, you may just diagnose it with uh, um, microbiological methods. If a woman, for example, uh, can't have pregnancy. Another one is uh, psittacosis. Psittacosis or a pneumonia that is caused by chlamydia psittacea. Chlamydia psittacea enters the respiratory tract, then the lungs, then enters the bloodstream and uh, transported to the liver and spleen. I hope you remember that it is transmitted by airborne transmission from birds, from doves or parrots. Bacteria replicate in the liver and spleen where they produce focal areas of necrosis. A lymphocytic inflammatory response in the alveoli and interstitial spaces leads to edema, infiltration of macrophages, necrosis and sometimes hemorrhages, and destruction of the lung. It resembles pneumonia, it has all clinical manifestations of pneumonia. Microbiological diagnosis, treatment and prophylaxis of chlamydia infection. The first one that is very important here, that specimen must be obtained from the involved site by scraping. We must not collect pus or vaginal discharge, vaginal or pen, pen, penis exudates, because bacteria, chlamydia, are obligate intracellular parasites, they live inside human cells. That's why they are present on, they are absent on the surface of mucosal membrane, they are present inside cells. So we should use scraping uh, in urethra, cervix, rectum, oropharynx, conjunctiva. How is it, take, is it done? We should uh, uh, touch uh, on urethra, for example, or conjunctiva touch a little bit and take some epithelial cells from there. So we don't take uh, specimen from pus or vaginal exudates where relatively few organisms may be present. 
just some, but it is very difficult to uh, find out them. And serum also may be taken for serological tests. Which methods are used? The first one is microscopic. Chlamydia-trachomatis can be identified microscopically in scrapings from the eyes or urogenital tract. Reticulate bodies are detected with uh, stained with Romanovsky hemza stain or Gimenez stain. Inclusion bodies in scraped tissue cells are identified by iodine staining of glycogen present in cytoplasmic vacuoles in infected cell. So we can use Romanovsky hemza stain and Gimenez stain for detection of reticulate bodies. And we also may use iodine staining, you use iodine for staining and detect glycogen. The another method is a cultivation. You remember that uh, chlamydia can't grow on nutrient media, they can uh, replicate just inside living cells. Specimens are added to cultures of susceptible cells, for example, McCoy cells. And the infected cells are examined for the presence of iodine staining inclusion bodies. After some time, after some uh, days, we should detect uh, these McCoy cells for the presence of inclusion bodies. How to detect it? Uh, use iodine staining, stained by iodine or gram stain, uh, Romanovsky hemza staining or Gimenez stain. Iodine stains the glycogen in the is present in inclusion bodies. The presence of iodine stain in inclusion bodies is specific for chlamydia trachomatis. Uh, cultivation, uh, culture method is uh, used rare just for research. Uh, the most uh, important method for diagnosis of chlamydia infections are serological and PCR. Sure, sure, uh, the most important is PCR. It is the only method that uh, is uh, widespread today for diagnosis of chlamydia infections. Uh, when PCR is not available, uh, we may use serological tests like ELISA, immunofluorescence test and complement fixation test. Prophylaxis and treatment of chlamydia infections. A vaccine is not available for chlamydia infections. You should remember that uh, almost all chlamydia infections are mostly chronic, chronic infections. They are long lasting infections. There is no any immunity after chlamydia infections. For treatment we can use tetracycline and erythromycin, but please remember that we must not use penicillin. Why? Because target for penicillin action is peptidoglycan. What about peptidoglycan in chlamydia? Peptidoglycan is absent at all. That's why there is no target for penicillin action. The another pathogen, the another pathogen that some that resembles uh, chlamydia a little bit is mycoplasma. It belongs to family Mycoplasmataceae, genus Mycoplasma. It was named due to its shape resembling fungal filaments. Myco, myco is a fungi from a Greek language. And there are some species. Mycoplasma pneumonia that uh, causes upper respiratory tract disease, tracheal bronchitis, atypical pneumonia. You may understand, you may memorize it because of its name. Mycoplasma hominis cause pyelonephritis and pelvic inflammatory disease and mycoplasma genitalium cause urethritis. Another genus here uh, is urea plasma and there is one species uh, in this genus that is urea plasma urolyticum that also causes pelvic inflammatory disease in both uh, male and female. Morphology of mycoplasma. Mycoplasma are the smallest bacteria among all prokaryotic microorganisms. They are the smallest. They are pleomorphic, like chlamydia. They may be spherical, short, rod-shaped or filamentous bacteria. 
because they don't have a rigid cell wall. Rigid cell wall uh, provide um, spherical shape or rod shape, but these bacteria lack of cell wall. They don't have it. But they have three layers in cell membrane containing cholesterol. Gram negative, these bacteria are gram negative, but stain it hardly, so we use Romanovsky GMC stain for detection of mycoplasma. Non spore forming, non capsulated, and they are membrane parasite of epithelial cells. Membrane parasite. Um, we have said about chlamydia that, that they are intracellular parasites, they live inside epithelial cells. Mycoplasma are membrane parasites, they uh, live mostly, they inhabit surface of epithelial cells. <laughs> what about cultivation? They are facultative anaerobes, except uh, mycoplasma pneumonia that is obligate aerobe. They require exogenous sterols supplied by animal serum added to the growth medium. So this bacteria may be cultivated, may be cultivated in special media like mycoplasma agar and mycoplasma broth. But they grow very, very slowly. They form typical colony uh, that resemble fried eggs. And they also may be cultivated in cell culture. In cell culture, hella for example. In this diagram you can see uh, Morphology of colonies of mycoplasm, they resemble fried eggs. Uh, they have uh, two antigens. The first one is protein of cell membrane, that is called P1. It is variable antigen. And another one is glycolipid of membrane. So it has no cell wall, so there are no any other antigens. What about fermentative properties? Mycoplasma have limited biosynthetic abilities. They require cholesterol for their cell membrane and can generate energy via the breakdown of arginine. In other species, urea plasma it requires urea. That's why it is named urea plasma. A urea is converted by this bacteria into ammonia. Uh, virulence factors. Mycoplasma have adherence protein P1, uh, which is also antigen that we have said. It binds to base of cilia on epithelial cells, leading to eventual loss of ciliated epithelial cells. I hope you remember what is the function of cilia in respiratory tract. Uh, they produce IgA proteases that destroy immunoglobulin A. They produce nu nucleases that um, destroy nucleus of human eukaryotic cells. They have ability to invade and survive intracellularly. Uh, they stimulate migrations of inflammatory cells and release of cytokines. So the diseases caused by mycoplasma are characterized by a long inflammation. They produce endotoxin. And also exotoxin that's similar to pertussis toxin. Epidemiology and pathogenesis of diseases caused by mycoplasma. As a source of infection are sick man and bacterial carriers. Transmission by airborne transmission for mycoplasma that spread by close contact via aerosol uh, droplets and sexual contact for mycoplasma genit genitalium, mycoplasma hominis, and, my and ureplasma urolyticum. Pathogenesis. Uh, the first one about uh, mycoplasma pneumonia. Mycoplasma pneumonia binds to the epithelial cells of the respiratory tract and damages the respiratory epithelium. It permits the lower respiratory tract to become contaminated with microbes and mechanically irritated. So it causes persistent cough in patient. Uh, then mycoplasma pneumonia stimulate production of pro-inflammatory cytokines, for example, interleukin-1, that cause inflammation process in the lungs. 
Diseases caused by mycoplasma and pneumonia include tracheobronchitis and pneumonia. Pneumonia mostly spreads among classmates or family members in a typical symptomatic form or asymptomatic carriage. It uh, is the most often in asymptomatic form. The lack of acute illness or the absence of uh, clinical symptoms in most patients has given rise to the nickname walking pneumonia. Walking pneumonia is pneumonia caused by mycoplasma pneumonia that is characterized by absence of clinical manifestations. Another species uh, like mycoplasma uh, genitalium, mycoplasma hominis and, my and uroplasma urologicum cause uh, urethritis and pelvic inflammatory disease. Mycoplasma genitalium can cause non-gonococcal urethritis. Non-gonococcal means caused not by necessary gonorrhea, not by gonococci. And pelvic inflammatory disease. Mycoplasma hominis also can cause pyelonephritis and postpartum fevers. Uroplasma urolyticum can cause non-gonococcal urethritis, pyelonephritis and spontaneous abortion or premature birth. Microbiological diagnosis, treatment and prophylaxis of mycoplasma infections. For diagnosis, we can, we can collect throat swab, sputum, genital secretion. So here in mycoplasma infection, we shouldn't uh, take scrapings, we shouldn't try to collect it. The bacteria are present on the surface of mucosal membrane and in excretions. Uh, you know that they are membrane parasites, they are not obligate parasites, they can live uh, outside human cells, they can be cultivated on nutrient media, so we can collect swab, swab excretions or discharge from uh, urethra or vagina in uh, sexually transmitted disease in urogenital infections, sputum in uh, pneumonia, a throat swab in mycoplasma, in uh, tracheobronchitis. Which methods are used? The first one is microscopic. This is not particularly useful because of the absence of a cell wall, but it can be helpful in eliminating other possible pathogens. Now we can use the Romanovsky film system. Cultivation. Specimen must be sent to the laboratory in special transport media. It may take 2-3 weeks to get a positive identification. Bacteria, mycoplasma, grow very, very long. Culture is essential for a uh, definitive diagnosis. Uh, the most important methods for diagnosis are serological tests and PCR. PCR is also uh, the main method for diagnosis today, like in chlamydia. Um, they are uh, identified together as a sexually transmitted disease. Serological tests include complement fixation test and ELISA. ELISA. What about prophylaxis and treatment? Vaccines are not available for diagnosis of mycoplasma infections and there is no any immunity after infections. Uh, most mycoplasma infections are also chronic infections, chronic infections like chlamydia. Treatment. You also should memorize, should remember that we must not use penicillin because mycoplasma lacks cell wall. Chlamydial and mycoplasma infections are not treated by penicillin. Penicillin and the same penicillin antibiotics. Uh, we may use uh, such antibiotics like tetracycline, erythromycin and chloram phenicol. So students, uh, in mycoplasma, uh, mycoplasma is the last bacteria that we discuss in uh, microbiology. Now I will explain you some information, I will tell you about uh, fungi. Uh, Please don't 
forget about this group of microorganisms. From my experience, um, fungi is the last group of microorganisms in this lecture. That's why students don't study it. No, fungi is an important group of microorganisms, especially in tropical countries, especially in countries with tropical uh, warm and wet climate like India, Bangladesh, like Egypt. So you shouldn't forget about them. Pay your attention at this group. When I uh, did uh, exam test, exam test is that um, FMGE test, a lot of questions, about half of questions was about fungi. So, fungi are eukaryotic microorganisms. Eukaryotic, they have nucleus. Bacteria don't have nucleus, they are prokaryotic, fungi have nucleus. The rigid cell wall composed of ketin and glucan and the cell membrane with ergosterol. All fungi are gram positive. Most fungi exhibit aerobic respiration, also some of them are facultative anaerobes. Uh, fungi may divide, may replicate bisexually by formation of spores asexually or both ways. The basic morphological element of filamentous fungi is hypha, and web of uh, intertwined hypha is called mycelium. I will explain you what is it. The basic form of unicellular fungus is yes cell. Dimorphic fungi. Dimorphic fungi are usually assume the form of yeasts in the parasitic stage and the form of micelli in the saprophytic stage. Parasitic stage when they are in human organism. Classification of fungi. There are four groups in accordance to its morphology. The first one is called yeasts. They have round or oval unicellular cells. These are cells, they have nucleus. Reproduced by asexually, by usual uh, division. Produce creamy mucoid colonies. Example of yeast is Cryptococcus neoformans. You should also remember examples. Uh, another group is called yeast-like fungi. Yeast-like fungi. Yeasts. These are yeasts with pseudo hip. They grow partly as yeasts and partly as elongated cells. Look here in this diagram. These are yeast cells and these are elongated cells. So they include both like yeast and like cells. Example, candida, candida, like candida albicans. This third group is called moles, moles. They grow as um, long filaments called hypha. These are hypha. Hypha may be septate, septate uh, with walls inside. For example, look at this picture. Uh, this is hypha. Hypha is, is, is septate. There are walls inside the cells. And non septate, like this one. There are no walls inside hypha. Hypha grow and form mass growth that call it mycelium, complex of large amount of uh, hypha is called mycelium. Examples of these um, moles is aspergillus. In this photo aspergillus they have uh, non-septate hypha and penicillium. Penicillium uh, has septate hypha. You know about penicillium. Uh, this mold was uh, a source for production of penicillin. Penicillin, penicillin is produced by this uh, fungi. They reproduce bisexually and asexually way. In this photo, in this photo, you can see colonies of mold on invertebrate media. Uh, you can see colonies of mold every day if uh, you, uh, for example, have a bread at home, uh, jam on uh, soap. 
what else any food that uh, is present in your fridge or without fridge on your in your kitchen uh, molds are formed very very fast during uh, three four days three four days on any food any food where there are sugars carbohydrates for the growth And the last morphological group is dimorphic fun fungi. Uh, they exist as yeasts in human tissues and on nutrient media at 37 degrees Celsius and as mycelial forms as hepha in the soil. Uh, and at uh, temperature 22 from 22 up to 25 degrees Celsius on media. Many medically important fungi are dimorphic fungi that cause uh, mycosis. For example, Coccidioides imitis, Paracoccidioides brasiliensis, Histoplasma carcellatum, Blastomyces dermatitis, and Spurtrix uh, shilenki. We can uh, see uh, in this diagram dimorphic fungi that in 25 degrees Celsius and in soil. Uh, soil is an uh, important source of this fungi. In soil, they form mycelium in human tissue and temperature 37 degree they form uh, they exist as a yeast coccidioides form mycelium in soil and form uh, unicellular as yeast in human tissue mycelium in the soil yeast mycelium and yeast Fungi cause fungal infections, fungal diseases that are called mycosis. Mycosis. Because uh, fungi have another name from uh, my fungi is a Greek lang Greek name uh, from Latin name. It is also called mycota. So fungal diseases are classified into the following groups. The first group is superficial mycosis that include keratomycosis. Uh, it, uh, they destroy outermost layers of the skin and hair. Dermatomycosis that extend deeper into the epidermis and also include invasive hair and nail diseases. The third group is subcutaneous mycosis that involve the deeper layers of the skin, including cornea, muscle and connective tissue, and deep mycosis or systemic mycosis that involve internal organs like lungs, liver, spleen and others. The first one is keratomycosis. Keratomycosis are limited to the outermost layers of the skin and hair. Infection can be uh, transmitted by direct or indirect transfer. Fragment of keratin containing the infective particle through uh, hairbrush, for example, through um, shoes, if you same if you wear uh, shoes of another person. Uh, there is no evidence of natural immunity. Keratin uh, of skin or uh, nail or hair affected by enzymatic digestion and mechanical pressure of this fungi. HIFA grow into newly differentiated keratin as it formed. Which diseases? These are white and black piedra and tinea nigra. Let's look here. Piedra. Piedra. It, is, it may be a white piedra or black piedra. Uh, it is colonization of the hair shaft causing black or white nodules. Uh, and which species cause it? Uh, Trichosporon causes white piedra with white nodules. Uh, piedra causes black piedra. And in this photo you can see clinical manifestation of tinea nigra that is characterized by brown or black superficial skin lesions caused by cladosporium. cladosporium. Another group of superficial mycosis are dermatomycosis. Dermatomycosis extends deeper into the epidermis uh, 
and they also include invasive hair and nail disease. These diseases are restricted to the keratin keratinized layers of the skin, hair and nails. These organisms that cause uh, the disease are also called dermatophytes. dermatophytes. They are classified into three different groups based on their natural habitat. Geophilic, that live in the soil, so soil is the main source of infection. Zoophilic, that are transmitted from animals. And anthropophilic, transmitted from human. The classic pattern or classical manifestation of dermophytosis is a ring worm. It is a ring of inflammatory scaling with uh, diminution of inflammation towards the center of the lesion. Which diseases are uh, included here? It is a flavus, tinea capitis, ectotrix, and endotrix. Let's look at these photos, uh, at these pictures. In this photo, you can see clinical manifestation of flavus. It is a skin disease, especially of the scalp characterized by dry yellow incrustations that have an unpleasant door odor, usually caused by the fungus trichophyton. In this photo you can see tinea capitis caused by uh, microsporum. microsporum. The another group of mycosis are subcutaneous mycosis. We have just talked about um, keratomycosis and dermatomycosis that are included in one group superficial mycosis and now let's talk about subcutaneous mycosis subcutaneous mycosis involves the dermis subcutaneous tissues muscle and fascia these infections are chronic and can be initiated by piercing trauma to the skin which allows the fungi to enter so the main source of uh, subcutaneous mycosis is environment, for example, soil. These infections are difficult to treat and may require surgical interventions such as debridement. Uh, they are characterized by the development of cysts and granulomas. Which diseases? Which diseases are included in a group of subcutaneous mycosis? These are mycetoma, chromomycosis, and sporotrichosis. Mycetoma. It is a chronic granulomatous infection of the subcutaneous tissue. It was described in Madure in South India, so uh, it's also called Madura food. It is characterized by subcutaneous swelling of food, deep abscess that burst with formation of chronic multiple sinuses discharging purulent fluid you can see here uh, this um, mm, chronic abscesses these sinuses are mostly painless painless chromomycosis is a chronic fungal infection affecting skin and subcutaneous tissue it is characterized by the development of slow growing uh, varicose nodules you can see them on the photo it is most commonly seen in the tropics where the warm, moist environment coupled with the lack of protective footwear and clothing predisposes individuals to direct inoculation with infected soil or organic matter. Uh, for example, in African countries when, where they don't, wear foot, don't use footwear, shoes for example. Sporotrichosis is a chronic infection that is characterized by nodular and ulcerative lesions. You may see them on this photo. That develop along lymphatics that drain the primary site of inoculation. Appears after local trauma um, and develops to extremities. We can see we can see in this photo. Uh, some subcutaneous nodules that are located along lymphatic uh, lymphatic vessels. Another group of mycosis are deep mycosis. Deep mycosis are also called systemic mycosis. They develop due to primary pathogens originate primarily in the lungs and may spread to many organ systems. 
Deep mycosis is usually seen in immunosuppressed patients with uh, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, cancer, or, or diabetes. They can be acquired by inhalation of fungi or fungal spores and using of contaminated medical equipment. Which diseases? These are histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidiomycosis, and cryptococcosis. Histoplasmosis is caused by histoplasma capsulatum. Uh, infection appears uh, due to inflation of spores, often associated with immune deficiency. Primarily disease of reticulo endothelial system. So which cells are infected? These are cells of uh, lymphatic system, uh, macrophages, um, lymphocytes. Uh, so results in lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly, and anemia. You know that uh, pro proliferation and antigen-dependent di um, differentiation of immune cells um, develop in occur in uh, uh, secondary immune organs, liver, spleen. That's why uh, when this pathogen is present in these cells, so you can see enlargement of uh, liver and spleen, enlargement of lymph nodes, and anemia. Uh, histoplasmosis is characterized by formation of granulomas in skin or mucosa. If disseminated, if it is disseminated, histoplasmosis can be fatal. The another uh, deep mycosis is coccidioidomycosis. It is caused by coccidioides imitis. Uh, infection occurs because of inhalation of spores. Primary infection uh, um, resembles flu-like symptoms. Um, it may be also like severe pneumonia. It leads to fever and bronchial pneumonia. May involve uh, another internal organs, organs of central nervous system, bones, and skin. Aspergillosis caused by several species of Aspergillus, Aspergillus flavus, Aspergillus fumigatum. It is associated with immune deficiency too, can be invasive and disseminate to the blood and lungs, causes acute pneumonia. Uh, mortality is very high, and this can occur in a matter of some weeks. Cryptococcosis is caused by Cryptococcus neoformans. It is the only deep mycosis common in India. Um, in infection occurs due to inhalation of spores with dust. Uh, it is seen in immunocompromised patients. Uh, acquired immune deficiency syndrome patients. In most cases, it is asymptomatic pulmonary infection. In disseminated infection, uh, skin, lymph nodes, and bones may be involved. So you may see that most, most uh, deep, all deep infections uh, have the same mechanism. Uh, histoplasmosis occurs through inhalation of spores, spreads, uh, inhalation of spores, primarily uh, cause infection of uh, lymphatic system, then disseminate and infect other organs, coccidiomycosis also through inhalation of spores cause pneumonia and infect other internal organs, aspergillosis also uh, infection occurs because of inhalation of spores, infect uh, lungs and may uh, disseminate. Cryptococcosis is the same by inhalation of spores, then may infect other internal organs. And the last group of infections, the last group of fungal infections that we must discuss, these are opportunistic fungal infections. Opportunistic. I hope you remember that opportunistic infections are caused by uh, bacteria or fungi, in this case, by microorganisms of normal microflora. Uh, in uh, uh, break of uh, normal has defense. Usually causing uh, opportunistic fungal infections usually cause infections in persons with impaired host defense or in immunocompromised patients with low uh, immunity.
often appear after widespread using of antibiotics, corticosteroids, and immunosuppressive drugs. Caused by uh, such fungi as Candida, Aspergillus, and Mocker. Some of them are members of normal microflora, for example, Candida. So Candida is always present in human organism in mucosal membrane of throat, vagina, on the skin, uh, but um, when after using of antibiotics and other factors, candida multiply, multiply and cause candidasis. Candidasis. Uh, firstly, candida species, which are normal body flora found in the skin, mouth, vagina, and intestine, so it is endogenous infection. It develops, it develops uh, when immune uh, defense is weak or in a um, break of normal defense. Predisposing factors for candida growth include mucosal trauma, danger of hygiene, carbohydrate-rich diet, drugs, broad-spectrum antibiotics, for example, steroids, immunosuppressant and cytotoxic agents that uh, inhibit uh, immune cells and uh, they provide multiplication of candida. Diabetes, uh, because in diabetes patients and patients with diabetes, uh, you know that glucose is not destroyed. Uh, they need uh, injection of insulin. Um, that's why, and candida, candida like sugar, so uh, they also develop in carbohydrate rich diet when the person uh, gets a lot of sugars. In HIV infection, almost uh, a, all HIV patients uh, uh, suffer from candidiasis and other immune deficiency states. A pregnancy woman, pregnancy woman also uh, have candidiasis because of uh, a change of their metabolism. Um, as from my experience, I always uh, see candidiasis uh, in uh, people, in students, they say, um, during exams. So stress also causes um, candidiasis. But you should remember that the most, the most uh, frequent case of candidiasis are broad-spectrum antibiotics. Broad-spectrum antibiotics kills the normal microflora bacteria. That's why uh, candida start to multiply. Normal uh, microflora, for example, in woman in vagina, normal microflora bacteria produce, uh, like lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, produce lactic acid. Candida don't like acidic uh, environment. So they don't multiply it in these conditions, but when lactobacillus and bifidobacterium uh, are killed by broad spectrum antibiotics, uh, there is no lactic acid and candida start to multiply. Candida infections have various manifestations depending um, on the site and the degree of immunocompetence of the patient. Clinical manifestations of candidiasis include oral thrush, vaginal thrush, intestinal candidiasis, endocarditis, meningitis, and sepsis. In this uh, photo, you can see manifestations of oral thrush. Uh, it occurs on buccal mucosa, palate, and dorsal tongue, characterized by development of white flakes that can be scraped off with tongue blade. Can be initiated by broad spectrum antibiotics or immune dysfunction. So um, it resembles it resembles uh, cottage cheese. Can look at this uh, white place. It resembles cottage cheese. Very specific manifestation. <coughs> um, candida also may cause vaginal thrush or vulva vaginitis. We can see that white plaques, white plaques. It is open at uh, vagina, open at vagina. It is cervix, and there, there is a cervical channel. White plaques are formed in cervix, cervix, vaginal mucosa. Here, often seen in pregnancy uh, because of metabolism change and after widespread antibiotics using. 
Now, about microbiological diagnosis, treatment, and prophylaxis of mycosis. It is very uh, good for students that uh, methods, uh, treatment, and prophylaxis is the same for all groups of mycosis. Firstly, about specimen. The choice of specimen depends on the site of infection. If it is superficial mycosis, superficial mycosis like keratomycosis or dermatomycosis, we should collect nail clippings, skin scrapings, um, plucked hair um, um, that are collected in folded squares or black paper or card fastened with clip. In um, uh, deep mycosis, in deep mycosis, uh, we should collect blood, for example, or sputum. In uh, candidiasis, we should collect uh, vaginal discharge or throat swab. In uh, superficial mycosis, we should firstly we should use uh, ten, uh, ten percent or twenty percent solution of potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide for lysing the background of epithelial cells because epithelial cells that collected together with uh, fungal cells must be destroyed allowing more resistant yeast and HIF to visualize it uh, uh, enhance visualization of uh, fungal cells which methods are used the first one is macroscopic not microscopic microscopic exam it is using of woods lamp when we detect fluorescence in infected hair or we can see scalp lesions the another one is microscopic it is gram staining uh, all bacteria all uh, fungi are gram positive you remember gram positive we can detect hifa hifa and spores and for spores that are produced uh, the next method is cultural method cultivation. Uh, it is study of mycotic colony, mycelium, uh, pigment produced by chemical tests. We can cultivate, remember please, we can cultivate fungi on saburans dextrose agar, SDA, it is a short name, saburans dextrose agar and litmond of scale agar. <laughs> Serological tests may be used for detection of uh, antigen or antibodies, but they are useful only for systemic and opportunistic mycosis. When immune cells, uh, when immune cells respond to the presence of the pathogen, in superficial mycosis, uh, keratomycosis, dermatomycosis, um, fungal cells don't contact with immune cells that's why that's why immune response is not active it, it doesn't develop so we can use complement fixation test agglutination test and precipitation test for diagnosis of uh, systemic or deep mycosis uh, opportunistic mycosis and sometimes subcutaneous mycosis polymerase chain reaction also may be used what about treatment Fungi are eukaryotic cells, they have nucleus, so antibacterial drugs, antibacterial drugs are not effective. Uh, antibiotics are not effective. Antibiotics uh, are used for treatment of bacterial infections. What are antifungal drugs? There are such antifungal drugs like polyen drugs, they include amphotericin and nistatin, heterocyclic benzofuran like griseofulvin, and azoles like ketoconazole, clotrimazole, fluconazole, icroconazole. These are uh, all antifungal drugs that are used for treatment of fungal infections. Now, that's all about this lecture. Um, and in the end, uh, uh, I want to tell you important information. Um, for next microbiology class, you should prepare this lecture, lecture number 13. And uh, we have said, uh, uh, we have already said in some groups, maybe somebody uh, don't, doesn't know, that on the week from the 20th up to the 30th of April, when you will have microbiology class, there will be colloquium. Once more, for next microbiology 
class, you should prepare lecture number 13 this lecture. And then after that, uh, uh, in, in, in about one month, you should prepare uh, six lectures. Colloquium will include lectures from the 8th up to 13th. Lectures of this semester. Lectures of this semester. If you have uh, to rework, if you were absent or if you got to for the class, you must rework your classes before colloquium. Now, now that's all. Thanks for your attention.